All right, folks, welcome into the Lawn Yop Show. I don't like this. We're too zoomed in. Let's move out a little bit. Uh, the new season of the Lawn Yop Show. I am John. Got Chris Logan from Chris Logan Media on the side. He is joining the broadcast tonight. It is January 6, 2023. Tonight, um, we're going to talk about current events that's happened this week. And we're going to talk about what Chris is doing. New technology the new, the future of broadcasting. So welcome into the Lawn Yop Show. Like, subscribe. I got uh, the graphic there or this way. Uh, you can find us there. I've already got one strike on YouTube. So, <laughs> you know, uh -oh. um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to kiss it. I'm just going to let it roll. If YouTube decides that they don't want my content, they don't want my content, but uh, you can get it everywhere else. And, you know, if you can subscribe on multiple platforms, you're a member on multiple platforms, I certainly ask you to do that. And I encourage you to check out all these other platforms. Uh, but one more thing, I see the new season of the Lawn Yop Show. I stopped in the summer of 2022 because my third child was born. And that's really uh, in the fall. I'll always take a break because fall on Fridays, you can figure it out why I don't do this broadcast. But for the rest of the year, I'm, I'm good to go, except when I have a baby that I have to take care of. So uh, he's old enough now. We're ready to rock and roll with the brand new season. We're live on my personal Facebook page. The broadcast will be saved and then posted around on all those uh, places you see there. And uh, maybe one day we'll get enough. That's that's part of the subscribing, right? We'll get enough people listening and watching. And I can go live on some of these platforms, maybe. A lot of them don't have that capacity yet. A lot of them or second runners to places like YouTube and such. But for now, my personal Facebook page is where we will rock and roll. Be sure to leave a comment. Let us know uh, what you think. But joining me tonight is Chris Logan. Oh, I'm, boy, I got to get this pointing thing right. <laughs> You're still learning it, too. What's up, dude? Not much, man. You, uh, you know, you, you I'm, I'm honored, first of all, to be part of the first show. So, Thank you for that. And, and I was still working. And I look, you know, I'm an honest dude. And I'm going to be honest. I totally forgot about tonight. Like, look, today was a whirlwind from this morning when I, I got to my studios for the morning show on the planet um, until I, I got back here in my office. It was after five and I had some other stuff to do. And my wife brought me something to eat. Then I got the text from you saying, hey, we're still good. And I'm like, Oh man, I forgot about John. <laughs> and uh, but it it all worked out and you know excited to be here, man. So it's just one of those Fridays that I don't really I didn't really want it to be a 14, 15 hour workday, but it was. And I wanted to join you. Like I told you weeks ago, yeah, I'm I'm down for you know whatever episode, and, and I'm glad that I'm here for the first one. Well, this got play time. So you, you don't have to be on your P's and Q's uh, for this broadcast. But, <laughs> well, uh, man, but I, I look, folks, uh, TikTok. <laughs> you'll oh, be yeah. able to get back to it on Monday, though, right? Yes, yes. Well, I, I could have got back to it today, but on the show, I had Chris Taylor Brown from Trapped, and that dude's been, been banned from TikTok. Um, numerous times mm -hmm. and so i'm like man if i go back on tiktok live this morning my first morning back and i have chris brown from from trapped then i'm like i'm gonna get kicked off again so i didn't go live on tiktok i'll do that on monday sweet but awesome it was an awesome interview it's good somebody's given this guy a voice because he's been shut out pretty much everywhere. And uh, we've seen that with the Twitter files and Elon Musk exposing it. And if you think it's just Twitter doing this sort of thing, would that had the government, the FBI have a hand in it? I mean, they basically had a not only a backdoor. I mean, they they had their own portal into Twitter. You had several FBI agents, former FBI agents looking at Twitter. If you think that's only going on in Twitter and not all these other platforms, well, it's probably not going on on BitChute and uh, maybe a couple like Rumble 
Apple, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube, some Facebook. This stuff is definitely going on there. They're still banning people. They're still censoring people, shadow banning, uh, mm -hmm. and such. And we'll we'll get into that, especially over the next uh, few broadcasts. Uh, I just kind of wanted to get back into it. You'll see this video is powered by StreamYard. And we started about 25 minutes late tonight. Uh, I'll try to make it at 8 o'clock most nights, but we'll see how it, uh, how it all plays out. I mean, we're just trying new things, new graphics. StreamYard exists now. There's a lot of stuff that we got to try out. Um Technology is constantly changing, and that's going to be a big subject of broadcast uh, of what we're doing tonight in tonight's broadcast about the future of broadcasting. I want to talk about that article we've seen about how AM radio is pretty much done. All of these electric vehicles, we know Tesla didn't have it, but now all of these new electric vehicles that are being made, uh, all all the different, including Ford, the 2023 Ford pickup truck, whatever it is, that electronic vehicle is not going to have AM radio. And from what I understand, FM is not far behind. Uh, if you have a new vehicle, then you got a new infotainment system, uh, try and find terrestrial radio on that thing. It is not an easy job. I know you guys got a new vehicle. How many... How many taps does it take to get terrestrial radio? Dude, I, I'm I'm at the point where I don't even I don't even feel comfortable. Like and, and I'm pretty good at electronics and, and technology and music, and I'm a DJ and all the buttons on there, it it's just so hard. You kind of have to go to your preset to even uh set your FM stations if you want to, but it's it's changing so much, man. And I remember even you know, back when I was in radio, and, and this is when we had first launched our our apps and, you know, we were streaming online and our general manager at the time was like, I'm telling y'all in, in a few years, it's not it's not going to be them punching the the FM buttons anymore. It's going to be them punching apps you know, on their on their dashboard, whatever they have in their vehicle. It's going to be apps instead of those FM buttons. I'm telling y'all. And then, you know, we somewhat believed it. Um, but, but then, I mean, you know how it is. Oh, no, that's, that's never going to, never going to be that way. It's only going to be the fancy vehicles. That's going to be that way. And, and, and it's not, you know, it, it's almost standard now. And I think I shared with you before, man, it was, oh, now, I mean, I guess probably now, probably four years ago, uh, my son, he took my truck and he wanted to change out the radio in it. And he, he bought an aftermarket radio. Um, he got it put in. He came back with a box to show me what he got. I think it was a Kenwood radio. And, dude, AM, FM was so small on the bottom of that box. It was like an afterthought. It was Pandora, Spotify, this, that, and the other. That's what it was all about. And on the bottom, oh, AM, FM radio. <laughs> yeah, and it's – look – we both belong to the small market radio group on Facebook. Uh, by the way, anybody that doesn't know, we have been in radio for uh, decades now. Mm -hmm. And so in that small market radio group, I've been in there years and years telling people, guys, it's it's on the horizon. Mm -hmm. And people are very much naysayers. They don't like to hear because what you get is. Well, they said the same thing about television, but guess what? Radio's still here. They said the same thing about satellite radio, but guess what? Radio's still here. And to some instance, that is true, mm -hmm. but radio rely you get in your vehicle and it was as soon as you turn the vehicle on, the radio came on. Right. Television wasn't in there. Satellite radio did exist that was a threat mm -hmm. but now the entertainment center that is changing the new electric vehicles that are changing and that was a big argument i had with one of these guys just the other day in this in this facebook group where he's like well oh electric vehicles are stupid basically and i'm like i'm not arguing with you about electric vehicles yeah <laughs> but the thing is they're 
they're they are a thing and whether we like it or not well it's the damn democrats fine it's the damn democrats but whether yeah. you like it or not all all of these, whether it's Ford, Chevy, whatever, they have all committed by 2000 and, and what, 25 or whatever. They want to be so, mostly yeah. producing electric vehicles. The government mm -hmm. is giving so much money uh, to assist in electric vehicle production. In California, uh, I think by 2025, they will not produce another gas engine in that state. So whether we like it or not, that's where we're going. So the best thing you can do is just suck it up and adapt and figure out how to adapt now. And in fact, we should have been adapting five I know. years ago. Yep. And, and there, there are some radio groups that, that have adapted a little bit more than others. Um, there's some that, you know, believe in it a little bit more than others. And there's some that just don't want to see that happen. They're, they're holding on to what was there and, and what was in the past. And, Look, it is will the FM radio shut off tomorrow? No, absolutely not. It's not going to shut off tomorrow, but there's there's so much more with the digital space now and, and opportunities are there, not just for radio, pretty much for anyone. But I mean, I what do you think, man? Over the next five or so years, I mean, we, we could be seeing a little bit more of a of, of a change when it Look, comes to FM radio. Yeah, AM radio is done now. Yeah. I mean, even without them cutting the signal off, I, I look, we have friends um, still in the business mm -hmm. that are on AM radio, and I just I don't want to break their hearts. Mm -hmm. um, we have we know people that own these AM stations. Mm -hmm. My personal opinion is sell that shit to some poor sucker and GTFO on that. Whatever you have, whatever the brand is, I'm not saying get rid of your brand, but move that over, evolve into digital, mm -hmm. find a way to do it digital, and just get rid of that AM signal. Now, there's probably not going to be a buyer for it because nobody, but if there, there may be one poor sucker out there, take advantage of them now. You should have did it five years ago. Yeah. But do it now. Uh, for FM, I, I think whether it's warranted or not, you see, the thing with the electric vehicles is the signals compete with the battery or whatever the deal is. Yeah. So there's too much interference. The AM signal is terrible. So they're just not putting it. But that becomes a precedent that becomes the precursor and then you're just fm is is gonna fall as well i mean mm -hmm. i don't uh, let's see i've been in radio since 2002 so mm -hmm. it it is uh it's been 20 years and you've been in radio forever as well it we um when I turn my vehicle on, even even though, uh, even if it wasn't a pain to find terrestrial radio, I still don't listen to it. I don't. When I get into my vehicle, the CarPlay app comes up, and immediately, just like FM radio would turn on when you got in your vehicle, CarPlay comes up, and that's what I listen to. Whether it's uh, it's mostly going to be podcasts. It was mm -hmm. probably something I was listening to. I had the phone in my pants and I walked into the vehicle and it just continues the, the podcast or the YouTube video listening to. And, and that's due. I mean, how old? I don't, we don't have to do names. We don't have to get too personal, but how old is your son and what does he do when he gets into a vehicle? Oh, it, it's Oxford. And your daughter as well, yeah. right? And, and my daughter, my daughter just started driving and she wants to change out the radio. Why? For, for that reason. But you, you know what's funny, though? And, and there was there was a part of me that was like, OK, so she's more about music on her phone and listening to what you want. Harry Styles and I mean, all this other stuff. But it, it was a few weeks back and she was listening. She said, yeah. Because her, she and my godchild go to the same school, so she started driving. They drive to school together, and they came across one of the local radio stations, and they were talking about the. Um, it was a joke of the day on the morning show, and so 
they both heard it and then they said it was a cheesy joke, but they both laughed. And she was like, Daddy, it was so bad. But every morning that we have to we have to listen for the joke of the day. And I'm like, wow, okay. You know, so so it's kind of like that old school thought of of having features on the morning show and all that kind of stuff and and trying to reel people in. And that was really her first time I've ever, ever heard any of my kids talk about a feature on the radio or just radio in general. I'm like, okay, now I know the time's not changing, but for her to say that, I'm like, okay. But dude, you, you think back. I mean, I'm I'm 47. You know, we we learned about music from the radio. That was how we were, that's how we consume music. music we didn't have the internet. Right. We we didn't we didn't have anything. We didn't have Spotify. We didn't have Pandora. We had the radio. And and to come up to your point of radio's always been in a fight. Yes, absolutely. Radio has always been in a fight, and r- with every fight that radio was in, radio was always the underdog, and everyone else thought that radio would lose. They would lose to MTV. They would lose to burn CDs. They would lose to Sirius XM, and they're still standing. But but I think kind of what, what could be moving in is something totally different from from those fights that radio was in, it, it, it's a totally different thing now. And then now people can consume anything they want. People can consume a podcast. They can consume a a, a station that they like. Um, I don't know, in, in Spokane, Washington. I mean, it it doesn't really make a difference anymore. You can find anything anywhere. And and but the you know that 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 radioness. If that makes any sense, that radioness can stay. You know that FM signal is kind of what what could be going away, and it's like you know taking what you're doing and moving it to the digital space, and that's kind of what I'm doing with with the planet. You know, it sounds like a radio station, but it's on most of the major online platforms, and it is not on an FM signal. You know, and I, the morning show, I told you, I, I wanted you uh, <laughs> to work that Friday, the other morning, because it's good for my mouth. But I am one of those people that consume these shows. Right. So I, I wake up, I get the kids ready for school and I start my routine and, and do my work. Uh, get that started at least. Do the rider line in the car rider line. I don't listen to any of my stuff. I mean, I basically uh, every now and again I'll just play a song off of my phone if the kids want to hear it. It's you can't focus on anything because my kids. Um, one just had a sixth birth in a few days. The other one will have his eighth birthday, and they just drive you crazy. You, you, you wish they would be quiet, but they don't. And so there's no point in listening to anything. But after you're done with the car rider line, get back home, knock out some a few more things to work. And then it's it's uh, your morning show on mm-hmm. the planet. I start doing that. And the interaction is what makes it, dude. I, I, mm-hmm. you, I love the interaction. And I'm one of there's a lot of people that like that. Mm-hmm. And that's something that that radio had with the call-ins, but people don't call radio stations anymore. I think they could kind of bring that back, but that's, that's another uh, discussion. But then right after you, okay, Tim plus his segment from at nine o'clock and then I can go back and there's a couple other episodes and podcasts and stuff that drop here and there. And I mean, I, I've got a school going all throughout the day where I, I listen to all these, all these content creators and it's not all politics and it's a bunch of different things. And it's almost like you would like, I would be at work. Like a lot of people did listening to the radio all day at work, except I'm getting content. I'm not getting music, but 
I'm a content guy. I want to hear the discussions. And there's a, we were talking about music discovery. The J- Jacobs Media, their latest survey they do every year. The latest one that came out for 2022, uh, n- nobody. I mean, the amount of people that go to the terrestrial radio for music discovery. Uh, is in the single digits in terms of percentage. If you want to discover a new song, terrestrial radio, according to that survey, is not the place you go. Um, In fact, according to that survey, the average age of a P1 listener, and you know what P1 is. Some people don't know. um, Like your your primary listener. So your, your hardcore listener is 58 years old. 58 and you look at the numbers you see how they they skew people under 30 don't listen to the radio they just don't um and and so i I see this and in all of these discussions there's a big focus on sales because at the end of the day you're it's about getting money and that award that's fine like i get it it, you get in your sales staff, find money where there isn't money to keep producing. You, you have videos and interactions. People do super chats. There's money to be had. And so you got to go out and find it. And that's all fine and dandy. But if people under 30 don't listen to the radio right now, and that's, I mean, like a, a 20, somebody in their 20s, I think. That percentage, according to that Jacobs Media survey, was, I don't know, man. It was like like a 10% or something like that. Really bad. <clears throat> so, eventually, your audience is going to age out of radio. So, you and I grew up with radio. People that came before us grew up with radio. It was something that you did. This younger generation is not growing up with terrestrial radio. So, while you and me may still have sentimental feelings about it. These kids don't listen to the radio. Mm-mm. They don't have any sentimental feelings. They don't, it, there's nothing to look back on. They weren't raised with it. They're not going to age into it. Mm-hmm. And that was a big difference. When we were younger, you didn't have control over the radio until you got older. Your parents did. And then when you finally got older, you were the ones pushing the buttons. But we aged into being able to control our own radio. Mm -hmm. The kids these days will not age into it. Right. And uh, I think some of the biggest shows in radio, you had that interaction. And I think the way technology is going, the fact that I can do this stupid little show, um, anybody can do their own stupid little show. I think you are harnessing that injury uh, injury. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to need it. I'm going to have to fix me another one. I'm, I'm running low. I'm out. Oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My throat 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 you're pounding him back. And dude, we were talking uh, before we got on the air and I, and I didn't even get me a drink, but uh, I, I think you're leading that, that charge and you're hitting the bases with the planet. So you still have a radio esque thing going on, even though it's digital. Mm-hmm. You're not on a FM AM transmitter. You're available to be reached anywhere in the world. You tap the unique demographic. That's that's big as well. But then now your your morning show. You're starting to hit the interactions. Mm-hmm. I'm a nerd. I do it. Plus, I want to help my buddy out. Sometimes I'll just type a dumb joke. You know, sometimes it's it's goofy. Sometimes right. it may be slightly offensive just to add more comments in it to get the video, you know, get the video out there. It it helps with the algorithms. Right. So I'll do that. And then I noticed the first week or two, it's mostly John commenting, but then all of a sudden now everybody's good morning, Chris, good morning, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. And and people love to have, their opinions heard and read. And when you go back, you do those, those, uh, those questions, you'll do like a poll or whatever. And, Mm -hmm. and man, you'll get 30 responses. And I guarantee you there are people tuning in just to hear 
you read their response to see your reaction to it and and talk about it and that that kind of interaction used to be a big deal with fm radio um you know you had shows like love line which i i will always bring up uh growing up to me that was that was the big show i think fm always say this they're trying to do it backwards they're trying to take an fm show and distribute it digitally and i think you need to take a larger show and you can export it to fm radio but it needs to be a larger show you need that interaction with everyone and uh, that's where it's going i mean when you have people spending hundreds of dollars for super chats in the hopes that their favorite creator will just read their dumb comment on air (laughs) And they do it night after night after night. People love that interaction. Uh, it's not there with FM radio anymore. It's mm-hmm. not. And it, nope. it's happening in spaces like this, which uh, I don't know if we're getting any comments. Maybe we don't. I do see that there's a comment thing. I don't know if it's integrated with StreamYard. Uh, I'm not seeing it, any, but it, it normally is, dude. I don't know. And I'm not calling you out. <laughs> I mean, with, with the free version you and a no we. You know, we had to pivot real quick, but I know with the version that I use, when it connects everything, um, you do see all the comments coming up on that window. Um, and then if you do so, and then it'll do separate views. So I am on my personal page, the planet page, and in my group. So you can see X amount of views came from my personal page. X amount of views came from the planet page. X amount of views right. came from uh, the group, and it, it kind of separates it all. But but it seems like you know more... Um, action has been coming from the group part because again, you got, you got to win with the Facebook algorithm and it's tough. Like, you know, the, the planet Facebook page has uh, like 2.1 thousand followers. Oh boy. That Jefferson's reserve is very, very good. Um, the, the planet page has 2.1 followers and that happened in about seven months which I feel is pretty good. And dude, when I would go live directly there, I'd reach 48 people. And I'm like, how is this even possible? Like my personal page, uh, I think I have like 3.8, 3.9 followers. And I'm lucky if I reach 200, 300 people. Um, and then, you know, the group's a little bit better. Um, I, I see some action there, but, um, you know, it, it's crazy, man. And, and to come back a little bit to to what you said about, the digital landscape and and really anybody can have a show now anybody that wants to to do a show you know dream of being i don't know maybe on the radio or on tv or in the media or something dude all they need is a mic and a camera or 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 a phone and some decent light and you're in there it, i mean everyone has that ability now the ability is out there when it used to be a select few and also think like that could be a reason. Well, other than not many younger people are growing up with the radio, but you know, there's not many younger people. There's a handful across the country that want to get in a radio, but not as many as back in the day. And it's hard for them to groom new talent in our market. Respect to all of them. I, I love each and every one of them in the market right now. But they've all been there for a while, you know, and we brought up interaction, you know, from time to time. I would listen to the FM radio and I got two very close friends of mine um, at a station that I used to run and a station that I used to work at. And I think they're probably the most um, interactive morning show that we have in the market in terms of doing things on social media, bringing actual people on the phones, uh, you know, taking things to Twitter, all like they have been doing that for a long time. And even, even when I was there, you know, and, and I'm not saying I, we blazed the trail, but dude, me and, uh, and, and I'll give them a, a name drop digital. And I were doing a lot of things way before, it was all popular, man. We were we were like making funny videos, morning show videos, and we put it up on YouTube. And when we started the breakfast jam, he, he brought his camera and we recorded like an eight minute piece of that. And so we were doing that uh, a, a while back, but not many people are doing it anymore. And and you think about it, and again, I'm I'm it's just my opinion. I'm not calling out people in this market, um, but all over. 
they're, they're, it, it's skeleton crews all over the place. It is. And, and everyone has more work than they need to have on their shoulders. They're wearing many hats. But, dude, you think about it, okay? You think about, um, I don't know, uh, what, what's his face? The biggest, uh, why can't I think of his name? Uh, the biggest podcaster, dude, for Yo, UFC. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, yes. Joe Rogan okay? And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even drinking. I have nothing. But, like, Joe Rogan, he's in a studio and he's talking. Like, where are radio people? They're already coming up with the content. They already have a microphone in front of them. They're already doing content. They're doing breaks. They're doing all this other stuff. Turn the camera on and record it. Or turn the camera on and, and, and go live. Create a podcast off of your content. Like, it's it's all there for everyone. And not, not, not really using it too much. And again, not... And, uh, in other markets other than ours, you know, the, the opportunity to do it is there. Just no one's really taken it. I think a big deal is age. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the, one of the things I'm going to go with this point first, because I'll forget it. I think I've already forgotten this point <laughs> like twice since we've been, uh, in this discussion, but I think, if people who own terrestrial radio stations want to come up with some good, intriguing content, they have to go after the youth. I don't know what a teen, I don't know what someone in their 20s likes. I'm in my, I'm on the backside of 30, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know that anymore. I might know a little bit, but I'm a boomer to them as far as they're, even though right. I'm not really, but you know. But you uh, are. I, you were born. I, I am in the 1900s. <laughs> That's yeah. what they call the 90s. <laughs> um, really, an exennial is what I prefer to identify as. But you know, so they need. How do you get? How do you get a 20 year old radio station? Mm -hmm. Ask a 20 year old what the hell they want to hear radio. How about that? Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> How about that? Yep. Ask them, and and they know what content they want. Well, they like a lot of video content. We can't do that. Okay, but if they could just listen to video content, what would they like to hear? You gotta you gotta hire young. You know this business. You know at least in this area. I can't speak about the rest of the nation, but at least in this area, this market, they're not hiring really young. They're not they're not hiring youth. Um, that's that's a big part of the problem and then the mm -hmm. ones that they do hire it is well you have like this and you have to do it like that and absolutely crushes their creativity mm -hmm. and you and i learned how to do radio you're not neither me or you and i might put my foot in my mouth here because i might end up doing it later but i'm not uh 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 the uh, so when we went the we went to the the store the store was a blah blah. You notice we don't do this. We were trained right, and yeah, I get it. it you know, you have all these other things like uh, Chris is saying in the chat, uh, Twitter and TikTok. These people weren't professionally trained, but guess what? No. They yeah. still get millions and millions of viewers and are making a ton of cash, and they stutter. You know, so how much of it matters? Some of it does. I think you want a happy medium. You want yes. them mm -hmm. to, to have a good presentation, but not be so strict. You can't say this. You can't say that. Toss them a script. This is how we open the break. This is how we end it. You have five seconds to do your own creative thing. Well, what's five seconds to do that kills any any talent? You know, you have to go young and you have to go new and you're not going to get any of that when the uh, <laughs> don't get too drunk. You might start stuttering, he says, um, <laughs> you know, you know, you're not going to you're not going to get that. And so you find their outlets and don't tell me the young generation isn't creative. They've got all the creativity in the world and they were born. They don't 
<laughs> actually, they don't have to be taught. They don't have to be taught. They already know how to do this stuff. They know how to be entertaining. They don't need to take a class on comedy. They just know what's funny and they know how to do it. It can get nature to them. You go through uh, Twitter and TikTok and, and Instagram and all of this stuff. These teenagers, they've got it, man. So you got to show them some respect. You, you got to tap it. A lot of potential yeah. there to be tapped. The other thing is... The people who are on the radio, being a radio personality was it. That was enough, right? That was the accomplishment. I'm on the radio. And that mm -hmm. might have worked for the last 20, 30 years. But now you have to forget I'm a radio personality. You need to be a personality. You need mm -hmm. to be a content creator. You need yep. to be an influencer. Radio is just one aspect. You should be hitting everything. You should be uh, all over social media. You should be on Twitter. I got, I got asked about TikTok and why in the hell would X radio station need a TikTok? Because nobody's doing anything right Unless, if, the, if the faces I mean, or voices of that station will not be the faces and voices of any social media channel for x station anywhere ever it's it's not going it's not going to work you know one thing on social media organic wins every time yes yes and you know how to do it mm-hmm You've been in radio 30 years. You know true, how to dude. do it. You, I mean, you talk, know talking about influencers, radio people, TV people. I mean, we've been doing endorsements and lives, you know, commercials for a very long time. That, that stuff that we did, Joe Rogan is doing stuff that I did, you did. Like all, all these people that are taking over now are doing that. It's just it's not being adapted in the same way for, for some of the, the radio folk. That is it, and I mean, it's it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, and yeah. I think the other aspect of it, and you've touched on it, is the staff at a radio station now is, uh, it has dwindled significantly compared to what it used to be. You watch, what is it, WKRP Cincinnati, whatever, mm -hmm. they have this big full stuff. Now yeah. it would be like three people <laughs> on one yep. of them's from the radio station down the hall, you know? Mm -hmm. It's, it's true, dude. It's, it's not and the I'm, same. I'm trying to look something up here. I might be lagging just slightly. I'm trying to see if they're going to start. I believe, because we said we're going to touch on current events. Congress yep. may be joining back in, in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to find another yeah. house speaker soon. So I'm going to pull up C-SPAN just off here in okay. the distance and and uh, what they got going on because we'll, we'll tackle some current events too. But so for let, anyone... Let, let me ask you this real quick. Does it just know, coming, coming, coming off of radio... And, my, mm -hmm. Hang on, I, I lost you. You got me? Uh oh, you got me. Yeah, because I'm trying to pull up. Uh oh, these can have a little. Uh, forget it. Close. I'll leave it alone. Okay. <laughs> don't I'll don't leave put it alone. the uh, I'll leave it alone. Yeah. But no, you know what I was going to say, dude, you know, talking about broadcasting or just the, the digital landscape, you, you can't you see it in TV. You know, you see TVs moving to uh, more app based programming. You see them moving. Uh, what is like the Yellowstone shoot off like 1883? You know, that's on Paramount Plus. You know, there, there's so much going, you know, Netflix and Hulu you know, what is it, Peacock that NBC has, 
And they're going to this digital platform because I also think they see it coming as well. And it's, you know, it, when I saw Thursday night football moving to only Amazon prime, I'm like, wow, that is a big commitment. And that is a big jump for them just to go to a digital subscribing platform. There were some people that were upset. There, there were, um, but they went directly to a streaming platform. And then also NFL Sunday Ticket is now or will now be on YouTube and YouTube TV. So yeah. off of direct yeah. TV, and that is going to digital platform. There's a lot of things moving that way, and I, I think that's just a sign of more things to come. It, it absolutely is. I mean – I think the the subscription business model is back into play. There's different ways, of course. I'm trying to. I'm pulling C-SPAN up here uh, on the TV. I'm trying to find out how do I just get to the channel here. Uh, trying to find the live one. There we go. All right, I'm gonna pull it up there. Um, the ad-based business model is still pretty good. But subscriptions, man, subscriptions are where it's at. And that is that is what people are doing. And I, I think every the writing's on the wall. The mm. writing's on the wall. I'm pulling up C-SPAN here. I, just to touch on it, they have had, I believe, 13, 13 different votes. For the leader of the house, and McCarthy has failed every time. He came up short earlier today because he did get some people to flip some of the Republican holdouts. Now they adjourned and they're coming back. Now they started at nine o'clock. And he just McCarthy is just getting nominated right now. That's what's going on. Uh, he did manage to get some of the flip. So they had a couple of other Republicans that were taking the day off there. They the reason why they adjourned and they're coming back tonight. They made them come back to Washington. He's making them come back to the House and say, y'all got to vote, because when you have more people there, the threshold kind of changes how many votes he needs. And he knows he's going to get those two guys. And. We'll still see. We'll see if uh, he gets them to flip. So that's something uh, that is that's interesting. We'll keep an eye on it when we're talking uh, politics or or current events, rather. <clears throat> but I did want to talk a little bit more about what you're doing with the planet. Um, so my personal Facebook page, uh, it's a handful of people, people that know me. Um, we're on Rumble. Still very early there, not a huge following. Uh, YouTube, a bit of a following, but who knows how long that's going to last. My audio version of the podcast does pretty good. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record on the audio version for tonight, and that's okay. I'll probably find a way to strip the audio from the video. I'm sure there's a way to do that, mm -hmm. and it might take a couple days, but I'll get the audio version up. My channel, the best. Avenue for me is BitChute. BitChute.com. You'll see the logo right about here. Got it. That is where I actually have a decent following. Now, for those people on BitChute that don't know, man, tell them who you are. Tell them about your internet radio station. I have a feeling a lot of these people would actually like that kind of music and uh, let them know about your show. Let them know about the guests you had on this morning and uh, what you got coming up. There's a lot of great things happening. I, I launched the planet, which is an online station playing nineties and two thousands rock launched it mid April. So we're going into 2023 and great things are happening. I, I decided to kind of up the morning show a little bit. I get on the air at seven, only do a couple breaks. So it's a, it's a little more music intensive in the seven o'clock hour. And then in the eight o'clock hour, I call it the power hour. And from eight until nine, 
uh, talk about the uh, daily headlines, some of the stories, some feel good, some funny stuff, uh, almost whatever I find in the headlines for the day. And that's been going well. I've been doing that on the station. And then also, as we talked about before, I go live on my Chris Logan Facebook page, the Listen to the Planet Facebook page, and in my Chris Logan in the Morning Power Hour group. So that's been going well. been getting more interaction and seeing that taking off a little bit on the online side. And I have a YouTube channel called The Power Hour with Chris Logan. Also Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, and Spotify too. So my whole thing, and again, wearing a lot of hats, I do that at Chris Logan Media. I mean, I do a lot of stuff, social media management. I do a few website things as well, help help a few people with marketing. And then I have uh, Listen to the Planet, which is the 90s and 2000s rock. And then a few months back, I launched another station called Millennium, which is a 2K pop station. So I'm running those stations and doing all of my daily stuff and late last year i was able to bring on someone to do the afternoon show so i have bridget rose doing three until six she's great she's been in our market for a while she's been on a couple rock stations in the market big in the cosplay uh uh kind of like uh what do you call it not not groups but uh the cosplay field and and all those cons and stuff like that so she's connected there and, and she's doing uh, a lot of cool things and I, I was excited to, to get two new shows that we have, and that's the Louisiana Loud Hour and also the Grindhouse. So Seth, yeah, those is were, the host. huh? Those were on terrestrial radio. Mm-hmm. And now you got them on the planet. Yep. And you know, it, excited. And when I when I was talking to them, um, you know, my thing was let's make it bigger. You know, let's. We got all this digital space. Let's make it bigger because Seth and Tyson are probably one of the two most connected people when it comes to the local rock scene, especially Seth. He has Louisiana Loud. That, that's his company. And that's why he decided to change his name. It was called something else when he was on the FM radio, but he decided to change it to the Loud Hour. Um, and when both of them wanted to come over, I'm like, look, it's kind of what what do you want to do? I'm not going to put any any restraints on you or anything. If you all want to do it at a different time, let's do it at a different time, a different date. And they both decided since they've been doing the show so long, they would stick to the same time. So Seth has the Louisiana Loud Hour, which is local rock music at six o'clock every Sunday night. And then Ty has the Grindhouse, which is a metal show. Uh, he does some national metal. Um, and also does some local stuff too. And that's from eight until 10 every Sunday. So they were excited to come over kind of a better overall situation for them. Um, Seth gets to talk about the music scene. He's not being told not to talk about this band playing at that show at this place. Cause they didn't spend money and that person spent money. Um, he can, he can talk about it all on the show and he's going to be doing some cool things using Spotify with his show. Uh, we're going to be getting into some podcasting. They're going to be doing a lot of interviews. You know, both of them are already getting hit up by a lot of people to to get on the show. So, so again, they're they're kind of taking. I don't want to call it my mindset, but but I'm open. I told both of them. I'm like, I'm I'm open. Give me give me some fresh ideas. We don't have to do the same old same old. And with them being connected with it with a ton of bands, not only in Louisiana, the Gulf South. I mean, they got chances to bring them on the show. Um, they can record podcasts. They can record interviews with them, put them on the show, play their music, and and we can support the scene and and do it in more ways than just on the radio. They're doing it on the station. And I, I got another show. I, like, I got a call from somebody today that I was very excited about. He reached out to me and... Um, I mean, I, I won't say it just yet, but he's like, man, what about what about doing a show like this? And I'm like, yes, like I want it. I want to do a show like that. And he's like, I, I can do it if you want me to do it. And I'm like, cool. And he's like, how you want to do it? And I'm like, nope. You tell me how you would want to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, how how don't don't you know, I'm I'm taking obviously my radio, uh, my years in radio are coming into play 
but that doesn't mean we have to do it the same way we, we did it. I want some fresh ideas. So I told him, I'm like, dude, you come up with some ideas. We'll talk about it. And then we'll go from there. He's like, I, I mean, like we can do that. I'm like, yeah, you know, let's, let's not be the same old, same old. So I'm excited about that. And then tomorrow morning and every Saturday morning, I do this show called the rock the nineties rock rewind. And I'm going to be visiting different years in the nineties and looking back at the alternative rock chart of different years. So this week's going to be this week in 1995 and I'll be doing the top 15 songs. You know, again, I, I thought about it and I, and I talked to Seth and kind of Tyson about it. And I'm, I'm like, look, fellas, you know, we don't have any time constraints. So Seth, if your show goes two songs over into the seven o'clock hour, that's okay. You know? And so with the countdown show, I was like, okay, let me do the top 15 shows because I knew 15 songs with some some talk in between it would, would be about an hour because I, I knew nobody would sit and listen for four hours to a countdown show or three hours to a countdown show. So I'm doing the top 15 songs of every year. And if it goes an hour, cool. If it goes 56 minutes, if it goes an hour, 10, cool. Because I don't think people that are listening are going to be like, it's 7 o'clock. I mean, it's 11 o'clock. Chris better wrap that up, you know? And, yeah, and that's exactly. some freedom where it's a little bit different on the digital platform than it was on the FM platform. Let me ask you this. You do weather and news at the top and bottom of the hour? <laughs> I, I do not. I, I do not. Man, and one of the stations that I worked at, uh, <laughs> uh, the one that I got fired from for not getting the, the thing in my arm, um, but like they were excited not long after uh, or not long before I left that they were bringing weather sponsorships back. And there it is. You're showing your phone and they're excited like, man, we're bringing weather sponsorships back. And I'm like, hey, if they can get money for it, great. If some sucker's like, going to pay for it. Right. And it's like, but who's going to wait through a five to six minute commercial break? to hear a, a weather forecast that they can just simply do this on their phone. I mean, now with, you brought up your phone. So I have the new iOS and you can set it. So it's 57 clear, high of 72, low of 42 on my phone. I don't even have to do anything. Like that's how it's set. I pick it up yep. and it's there. No one is listening through a commercial yep. break. So look, I, I, okay, I'll, I'll use that term loosely. I, no one, not many people will wait through a commercial break for the weather. Not many people will tune in to X for the weather. It's right here on their device. If you're a jock on the radio and there's some kind of significant weather happening or whatever, that's yep. not saying you can't do a break right. about it. Or even if it's not significant, it doesn't mean you can't just go oh it's 62 degrees we got some al green coming up you know yep. there's right you can do that that's fine but to devote uh a, a, time a, and temperature every hour <laughs> yeah. insanity but, you, you know real quick the um you know it's like the the weather is is there and and you can get it on your phone you don't have to listen through that time but you're right saying it's 68 degrees or whatever you know that's okay severe weather yes because i feel as my personal opinion that that if if radio wants to make it further than what people are saying it's going to to go they got to be they have to take it back to a a local they have to take a local approach on it and not worry about the corporate playlist, not worry about playing Harry Styles because um, X station in California or New York's playing it. If that song doesn't do well at, at a station here, then don't play it. If if the new Luke Bryan doesn't do well, don't play it. Like Play the songs here. Give them something different than they can get on their phone. And, and you know what? And, and that is, but that is some difference, that local weather, local traffic. It It is. 
You know, but but again, w- will they sit through six minutes to get the weather? No. But should a local radio station um, talk about the tornado watch and stuff like that? Yeah. Th- I mean, that's what radio was kind of built on, community service. And f- it needs to come back to that for radio to be viable in their local markets, I feel. That's just my opinion. Now, how about this, though? Content-wise, too needs to be local so we all know about the radio prep service maybe not everybody Mm -hmm. knows about that but there's a handful of places that make what's called radio prep it's it's preparation for your radio show so all the um djs that you listen to in the morning let me not use derogatory terms uh here but all of them that you listen to in the morning they get all they don't watch all these shows. They don't know everything about all these celebrities. They just get this prep service. They wake up in the morning, they read all the stories from this prep service and not only the news, the opinions on them, <clears throat> excuse me, the opinions are given to them as well. And there's only a handful of these prep services and they only have like a few riders each. And they all use the same ones. So everyone across the nation is reading the same stuff. They all have the same opinions on celebrities, the same opinions on politics and current events. They, it's all controlled by a handful of writers. Just yeah. a handful of writers control the brains of the nation because they're going to tell you how to feel about it. Yep. So I don't think wrong with with looking at this prep, but then you got to look at it and you got to go, okay, what does this mean to me? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't mean shit to me, then I should be able to say on air, this doesn't mean shit to me. And I talked to my partner and I talked to the guy working with me and I talked to my family before I go into work in the morning. Do y'all know anything about this? What's your opinions? If you Mm -hmm. bring the local opinion and the local jokes and not just the shit that's written on the paper. <laughs> that, that I mean, how many times have you heard the jocks all do the same jokes that were written on the paper across I, the market? I mean, in the same market. In the same market. Mm-hmm. They're doing the same jokes. The same bits. So, if you could, I mean, I'm not saying you have to cut out prep services. They do have some good stuff. They it It's a, it's a marker. It tells you what's happening. Mm -hmm. But then you got to use that local touch, that personality. It's a big Taylor Swift story. How big is Taylor Swift in Lafayette? I don't know. Hmm. Talk to people, find out, and then decide how your opinion should be. Because if you just read it from that sheet, Taylor Swift, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find, um, she smells like roses. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. I'm trying not to get too vulgar, you yeah. know. But uh, I mean, the way the way some of these things are, and Elon Musk is the devil, right? You know, and and all these bits that they get. Look, you got something called Universal Comedy Network or something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, UCN. All these radio stations across the nation use the same things. They're doing the same parody songs. They're written by a handful of people, all with the same idea. Don't make fun of Taylor Swift. I'm not. I'm just saying in some areas of the world, she is up here. And in some areas of the world, she's down here. And you have to know your audience. You have to know your audience is what I'm saying. And you deliver to your audience. You deliver locally. That's the big lesson to learn here. That's what I'm what yeah. I'm really trying to say. Yeah. And I'm yeah. looking over there voting again uh, okay. in the House. I was about to ask you because I see you looking yeah. at if there was an update. Nobody else got nominated. So it's just McCarthy and Jeffries. So we've already had two votes, one vote uh, as present, and somebody else voted for others. I don't know if that's for Trump or Jim Jordan. I think as that, so that's two. I think if they still have uh, five or six, McCarthy still may not have the votes. And I just wanted to say this because I'll 
I said we were going to talk current events, so I got to at least interject this a little bit because I do okay. have a question for you again on broadcasting and what you're doing with the planet. But I wanted to say this. For people that think this is chaos and this is a, a black eye and this looks terrible, folks, why the hell do you think they're have? Why, why would they have a vote? That's the whole point. They're supposed to argue. They're supposed to go back and forth and get things worked out and vote. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a vote and some guy would just be appointed to the position. This is yep. the point. Let them drag it out. Let them argue. This is beautiful. This is how yeah. our country was designed. You know, what's scary is some guy just automatically gets a position and, yep. and it doesn't even really matter. You, is it, the vote is, is useless because he's just going to get it. That's yep. what's scary. Easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, just easy access to power. Let them fight, dude. Let them yep. fight. Yep. You know, it, 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 even if McCarthy wins, they'll get some concessions. Yes. You know, yep. let, let them work it out. So this is a beautiful thing that's happening. It's, it, it's nothing to. Yeah. To, oh Don't believe God, that right? it's chaotic. And look, I, I, yeah. I kind of believe McCarthy's going. He, he's going to you think he's going to win it eventually? I think. So, you know, like I was explaining this to my wife she was like well he's still got so many votes and i'm like yeah that's because he's got so many people by the balls mm -hmm. the thing you know oh jim jordan only had five votes or whatever and mccarthy had 200, 200 yeah but he's mccarthy's got everybody by the balls so if mccarthy actually dropped out of the race it is actually possible that jim jordan would get enough votes to become speaker uh, the problem is with the corruption and and people it's it's money and to fund their their election it's and then it's committee seats people yeah. want to be on committees is the thing well why is marjorie taylor green you know voting for mccarthy that seems uncharacteristic but she's going to be on the house oversight committee and then what is the house oversight committee if it's run by mccarthy and and the president is joe biden and and the the DOJ is is appointed by Joe Biden. It's pointless to be in the oversight committee, but Marjorie Taylor Greene's still holding on to that. And maybe she, and, you know, and if you if you elect somebody else, couldn't they give her the same seat that McCarthy's going to give her? Well, maybe mm -hmm. she made too many enemies. That's kind of the yeah the the stuff going back and forth. The arguments going back and forth. I was contemplating maybe reading some text messages about this whole situation and uh me and my friends and no names listed but just reading the discussion because i thought it was somewhat interesting and maybe that'll happen probably not i'm just looking right here mccarthy 44 jeffries 54 and three dissenters uh, again i think they only need five or six dissenters and mccarthy still doesn't get it Still very, very early on in the voting. Now, back to uh, our discussion, because <laughs> I can do that. People are amazed at how I can get right back on track yep. with something I wanted to uh, say. But I wanted you to talk a little bit about the guests that you've had, because speaking about local, you've had several local guests and you've had one national guest. But that's something that how many, how many radio stations? In this market, had this the snow guy, but you did right, none, and he he was a local phenomenon with it, him him making snow during the freezing weather uh, in Iota, and I'm like I'm, I I want to get him on the show, you know I I want to get him on, and he was more excited to come on, so I had him had a couple other people, and then today I had Chris Taylor Brown from Trapped on the show, and he's a guy that's um. I guess outspoken would be the right word, uh, and I don't want to say outspoken. He he probably he just he just doesn't go along. He is not a follower. He is uh, a leader, and I. So it it started for me. I think I don't know. Maybe it's when I, I posted a video on TikTok, and I think the video was like of the planet playlist playing and it was playing a song and I kind of had listed all the artists and there was one person that come in and said, do you play? And they tagged at trapped. And so, I mean, at the time I didn't really know that they were getting banned and shadow banned and all this stuff. And so I replied back. Yeah. You know? And then, so I start following their page and I see Chris Taylor Brown, 
speaking some truth, right? Not speaking everything that's being fed by the news media. He's kind of speaking his mind. And he he told me this morning that, you know, COVID was cool. Uh, what? No, he didn't, he didn't agree with COVID, but when he was uh, tweeting and, and posting and doing videos about COVID, he didn't see much uh, blowback from that, didn't see any ban from that. It was him talking about Ukraine. That was the biggest thing that got him banned. And so that's what I wanted to talk to him about. Where did it all start for him? You know, where they were going, you know, because he has conservative views and, you know, most higher ups at, at radio corporations and big tech companies and, and, you know, some music listeners are not really that conservative. And he had brought it up before I asked him, but I wanted to ask him, are your trapped fans supportive of what you're saying, what you're doing? Are they, are they still going to the shows? And he said, yes, they are. You know, fortunately, there's a lot of people that were fans of Trap that are still supporting what he's doing. And, you know, I, I reached out and I'm serious. I mean, he since I've been following them over the past three months, he's probably on his third TikTok account. And, and it's crazy. You would think that TikTok would let some of that go because it's like, oh, that's Chinese and all this other stuff. You'd think that they would let some of that go, but but no. And so I've been changing accounts and following him a little bit. I'm thinking like, man, I wonder if he would want to do an interview with me. And so I try to hit him up on TikTok. And so on TikTok, you can't send a direct message unless you, you – they follow you and you follow them. So he wasn't getting my messages. So I commented a couple times under a couple of his posts and he ended up adding me and reached out and said, Hey man, what's going on? And so I asked him if he wanted to be on the show and he said, yes. And we were able to come up with this morning. He was on a little bit later than what I, than what I anticipated, but they were waiting on a bus cause they were getting, they're going on tour. They were going to Chicago or around Chicago to play tonight. But, you know, just a guy that's kind of speaking his mind, um, not believing everything that's being told to him. And I, I think he's being his authentic self and, you know, kind of somewhat paying the price with a certain group of people that may not agree with him. Well, we've learned this from the Twitter files, and I'm not going to deep dive into that. I mean, you can kind of go look it up and maybe we'll do a show on it <clears throat> in the future. But I feel like, a, you know, some of that's kind of old news. Some people still haven't really heard much, but I'll sum it up real quick for you. The government, the intelligence agencies are using social media to influence. It's called social engineering. They want you to think a certain way. This is it, it's PSYOPs, government PSYOPs, the same thing that they've employed across these. The United States has caused revolutions in multiple countries that's not some conspiracy theory we know about it um libya you know so we have caused i mean cuba before social media and all that right we had the thing going in in, in cuba we we caused the the whole revolution and then uh, eventually we hated castro but we the cia and the other intelligence agencies etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera, the deep state, like some would call them. They, they've been doing this all around the world. And eventually they, they did it at home. Mm -hmm. They realized that they could, they could get the narrative. Trump blew them away. We were supposed to go uh, have the, the Russian Ukraine war four years earlier. Um, I don't know if you remember, the whole thing with Syria and, and Hillary Clinton was on the on the stage there with Trump and she was saying stuff that would have immediately if she had her way immediately trigger a war. Mm -hmm. And so but this stuff had, had been planned. Uh, if you dig it up, I'm not going to pull it up here, but if you dig it up, the intelligence agencies in our government have been uh game planning ways to stretch Russia thin. And basically they don't want Russia to, to distribute oil to countries. They kind of, the United States wants to do that. That's a big 
part of it. Um, you look up the pipelines and all that. <clears throat> I'll forget the names of the pipelines. There's so many, but uh, Nord Stream, right? Whatever it is, Nord Stream, mm -hmm. that's the pipeline. So they, um, they've been game planning how to stretch Russia thin, and they realize you do it with Ukraine, and they had the whole uprising in, in 2014 and the, the battle in the Donbass region, et cetera, et cetera. Trump was not supposed to be president. Hillary Clinton was supposed to reside over this. It's why the Democrats, uh, the vice president's son at the time, uh, Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, he was in a, um, an organization which happened to be a uh, oil organization, right. you know, in, in Ukraine. So they were all doing that. It was in cahoots. Trump got in off. He put a pause on it. And when he got elected, they freaked out. They one of the things they noticed, and there was article after article after article. This isn't a conspiracy theory. You can just go back and look. They said, well, Trump did it with social media, right? It was Twitter. Trump, Twitter was dying. Trump brought it back to life, right? That, that was the whole the whole narrative. Trump did it with. So then they started blaming the Russians. Well, it was the Russians. The Russians only spent four thousand dollars, and I think it was something like over half of what the Russians paid for wasn't even seen until the election was over. Never mind. Donald Trump did it with social media. As soon as that happened in twenty sixteen, they said we gotta we gotta do something about this. And then, lo and behold. You have uh, government spooks from the FBI. There was a handful that were actually in the higher ups in Twitter. Ex FBI. Still, there's no such thing as FBI. I don't know if you know that. There's no such thing as FBI and ex CIA. It, that doesn't exist. But all of a sudden now they're working for Twitter. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, oh, what's that guy's name? His daughter was was in Twitter, and they they want to talk. It, we're not going to get into the pedophile stuff tonight. That, that's another night. But uh, uh, there's one I want to get into this. Uh, I'm still watching McCarthy 96, Jeffries 92. Uh, there's four dissenters and they're still in the Jays. So he still may not have it. We haven't decided yet. We'll see. I doubt. I, I'm sure if he doesn't have it now, they're not going to stay up later. They're going to adjourn. I right. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and dude, you, you brought up the the P word just now. That was another thing that Chris Taylor Brown, that was one of the things that got him dropped from all the iHeart radio stations was his video about pedophilia. And he was calling out Joe Rogan talking about that teacher and the 15 year old girl. Joke. Yeah, and he made like, the joke. Why is it OK here and it's not OK here? And he's just <laughs> kind of calling out the hypocrisy and and that's kind of what's what's getting him. I'll just say in quote unquote trouble. Yeah, I look the other night. I uh, I took a shower, come out. Uh, it was a bath. I'm sorry, it was a bath. Uh, uh, Got to be factual in? here. No. Okay. No. No bubbles. Okay. <laughs> Only from like the shampoo or whatever. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I use shampoo for my beard, okay, folks. I was about to say, <laughs> dude, where you use the shampoo? <laughs> but uh, so I come out and uh, my wife is totally not expecting this, and I say, so how much do you trust our government? And she knows me, and she knows me. It's just like not very much, John. <laughs> like, you, you know who Doctor Fauci is? Yes, John. <laughs> All right. So, you know, in our government, so Dr. Fauci is a head um, infectious disease expert, right? Yes, John. He's decided everything with COVID or whatever. He was the leader in all of this. But, you know, our government is structured that there is a um, an ethics and like oversight committee over him. That still, you know, all of the stuff he signs off on, all of this research, whether it's gain of function, blah, 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 there's still people that overlook him and make sure what he's doing is ethical and legal. And my wife is like, oh, okay, I got to know that. I was like, yeah, a government has that installed. And it's full of checks and balances. Do you know who um, is the head of the 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 committee or whatever that that holds 
Fauci accountable that holds his feet to the fire, make sure he's doing everything ethically and legally. You know who leads that? You know who's the head? Tell me, John. <laughs> it's fucking Fauci's wife. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. How much do you trust our government? I know. <laughs> but I mean, is it is it Ivermectin everybody. now on the list? Ivermectin is now on the list officially to treat COVID now. Uh, uh, I see that. I'm. I mean, I'm sure it is. The whole look when they were just coming right out and saying horse deworm. And I had that discussion with my dad earlier. And my dad, my dad was telling me he knew somebody that w took ivermectin and they were, they were great. Um, but he was like, I did, you know, I did hear some people took it and they were, I was like, that was a lie. Nobody was dying. No, they weren't dropping like flies. They weren't dying. Cause of ivermectin rolling stone ran that story. It was a lie. It wasn't true. And like, well, I heard that. I was like, yeah, well, they were lying. I mean, it, and, and the whole Joe Rogan thing and Sanjay Gupta went on and Joe Rogan made him look like a fool. Know, he has, uh, CNN's head, uh, it's, he's like, why would they just lie? He's like, look, I got the bottle right here. You know, she shook the bottle. The, um, what is it? The, you ever watch the, Whites of wild and wonderful whites of West Virginia. I, I've never Denver, really watched County, it. County, North Carolina. About, yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Oh, uh, shit. So, like, there's this, there's this dude, and he's probably in a dirty, uh, wife beater shirt or whatever. And he's, he's just playing it up for the camera, and he grabs this prescription pill bottle and he shakes it. <laughs> you hear that? That's the Boone County mating call. <laughs> So, it, I don't even know where I'm going with that, man. Uh, <laughs> but that is uh, the idea that, oh, yeah, the Joe Rogan and, and even the CDC said, seriously, folks, stop that or whatever. Don't, don't take horse medicine. It was originally designed and approved for humans before it was even designed for livestock. Yeah. Yep. And there were pills, and then there were the paste that you gave to the livestock. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and and I've heard of old people, old ranchers and cowboys that would take ivermectin to, to make them feel better. You know, I mean, but, but I mean, Joe Rogan shook his little bottle of pills. Yeah. Anything going on on the on C SPAN? Yeah. So McCarthy just voted for himself. There's four dissenters. Uh, we're in the M's, obviously, because McCarthy just voted for himself. So you had the guy in the R's. I don't know if you were watching earlier today, uh, and I'm not going to remember his name. His last name obviously starts with an R. But when you started getting these people flipping to vote for McCarthy, you could tell none of them were happy. Like Donald, who was a nominee before, he's in the back, and the, the lady calling the roll goes, Donald's? And he walks up and he goes, McCarthy. And he turns around. And he just immediately walks out. But everybody's like, Kevin McCarthy. You know? Uh, and then uh, some of them are saying, in the name of, in, in good faith and progress, I reluctantly vote for Kevin McCarthy. Oh, like, they say stuff like that. Yeah. Right? So they're all pissed off. And then he got Matt Gates, and who's uh, the one... Laura Loomer or something like yeah, that. Uh, uh, Bobert. Uh, oh, is it Bobert? Yeah. Bobert. Whatever. I mean, though they are not Laura Loomer. They, but yeah, Bo Bobert and Gates yep. are badass, right? Yep. Um, I like Matt Gates more now than I've ever. I didn't know a whole lot about him, but he's absolutely I mean, he, the guy was nominating Trump because he was basically trolling. He's there yeah, trolling. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. He'll never vote for McCarthy, um, but they are turning a lot. And so you had a lot of people put their head down. They're like reluctantly Kevin McCarthy because he made them some kind of deal. They couldn't refuse. Yeah. And then you had the guy. His last name starts with an R. I don't remember what state he's a representative. And he walks down the aisle, like halfway down the aisle. Head down doing just like all the others, just, you know, sour grapes, dude. And he goes, I place my vote 
for Hearns. <laughs> and he was pointing at everybody around him. And so, like, here's the deal. So when they would flip and they would say McCarthy, all ever like everybody else, all the Republicans are like, yeah, you know, they're all applauding that they flip. And then that guy's just turning around and he's pointing at all the rest of the Republicans. And he's like, <laughs> and he walks back and he's like strutting and happy and he's high fiving in the background oh, with the, the other remaining of the Freedom Caucus. Caucus. Yeah. I mean, it was hilarious. It was baller. I, I hope somebody clipped it. I hope somebody clipped it. Oh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. It's uh, speaking of clips, I, I think that's one of the things I'm going to have a hell of a time trying to clip this show because I'm going to want to do like, so that's going to be the plan for those of you uh, watching this. We want to get viewers who can't sit around for an hour and a half, three hours sometimes to watch the whole uh, broadcast. They don't want the long form comment. They would like just a quick little clip and they can watch in two minutes. I'm going to start doing that. Uh, it'll be a hell of a time, especially for this one to know when to start and end certain subjects because yep. most of the broadcast is about the same subject, but maybe I can narrow it down and it, it's going to take a sober mind for sure to, uh, to scroll over this and the clips may come. It may take, three days or something for them to come out. I may have to do the work on Sunday. So, but that that's a way I think we can branch out and possibly gain more like subscriptions, by the way, like subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. Let people know if you like this content and we'll do, we'll talk more about other topics. I mean, what else has happened this week? I know Congress has taken the, that's been the headline, right? We yeah. had uh yeah. we had the NFL the NFL deal, but uh what is his name? Hamlin. Yeah, I Demar heard Hamlin. he's doing better. Yeah. What's the heard on, on him? I, I think they had said that he woke up, he still intubated. Um he tried to say a few words. Um now obviously being intubated he couldn't, but he was he was writing things down. And one of the stories I read, well, a lot of people Oh, shared it, and it was reported that he asked who won who won the game on on Monday night. Who won the game? Yep. So you know they said Which that is he, nobody because they right cancel. They uh, they decided to cancel it, but they said he was doing better. But uh, he was still in critical condition, and he was still intubated. Big playoff game, uh, and. You, I mean, you got the juxtapositions of a few teams in the in the playoff hunt and the seating, and uh, they're going to cancel that. So I don't. Does that? Do they? It just counts as a draw. How does that count? Or just I, counts like they never played it? Like I think it counts like they never played it. I saw a few scenarios. Uh, man, I don't think I screenshotted it. It was last night. I saw a few scenarios, and it had to do a lot with if Baltimore won or lost, like where, where the seedings would be. So it had a lot to do with Baltimore and how that game's going to end this week in, in the seedings. And, but I think the NFL officials were meeting more to get that together and, and try to figure out a way, but it seems like they just didn't play. You know, it would have been like not even a tie. They just didn't play the game. It was canceled. All right, I'm looking. I'm looking here. There's five dissenters. Chip Roy flipped, and now they're calling him Flip Roy. Nobody thought Chip Roy would flip for McCarthy, and but the other guy with the somebody he said what Biggins or something. So, that, but it, I don't know. Or she's just I don't know why it said Biggins because they're in the yards. Nobody they didn't tally another one for others. I don't think. Well, there's five dissenters now. Okay. So I don't know. Did she get okay, they're in the yes. So I guess I guess maybe that was the guy. Maybe he voted for Biggins. And now that that must have been what happened. The guy that ah, I was talking about where oh, yeah, he, okay. I, I think he voted for like Biggins or whatever. So there's five dissenters. 
and they're in the yeses. There's only one in the yeses uh, that was voting present most of the time, and she switched, I think, sports or whatever, and she had switched to McCarthy, like the last vote that they had. So it's very likely she stays there. We'll see. It's going to be close. I don't know if... Because they, I don't know if somebody didn't vote and then they'll come back to it when they recall the roll. Mm-hmm. But normally by now, by the time they get to the R's and S's, previously they put the little graphic on the screen on C-SPAN saying that McCarthy doesn't have enough votes. So they got oh, five. So they know. Yeah, it's going to be it looks like it's going to be pretty close. I don't know if there's anybody else that's going to go against him. So it looks like he might have it this time, but I, I, I yeah. don't know the math on it because I don't know who showed up. I haven't, I haven't had the audio on, so I don't know who showed up. They were supposed to call a couple representatives who were out to come back in. That's why it took so long. They didn't start till nine our time, actually 10 o'clock in DC. Yeah, I know it's later. Yeah. You think they were having some uh, bacon wrap shrimp and lobster and oh, uh, I'm sure they and had steaks and yep. they wheeling and dealing. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Why I pulled it up on my phone. Um, why does a lady that's writing down the votes have such a small little pencil? You saw that? She's I mean, wearing. She's, she been writing that much? She been, it used to be. It was a regular pencil. <laughs> look! Look how small her pencil is. They're on the freaking 14th vote, man. <laughs> they only have one pencil. They spent all their money on steak and lobster during a uh, recess when they were taking their break. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was one guy, he, he walked out and he was furious. He's one from the Freedom Caucus who had been holding out. And then when everybody else started flipping, and he flipped too. And like he was just walking out and somebody asked him and you could just see him. He's like, I got to go home. And like he just stormed off. It's I mean it's Friday, man. Right, they right. Gotta, they got to take their uh, and, their and weekend that's break. The thing for this it's inconveniencing them. You know. Oh my God, they actually have to work. Right, and half of them were over seventy anyway. It's way past their bedtime. <laughs> I forget which representative said it, uh, but it was it was good. It was like Gates or or mm-hmm. Bobert or somebody. They were like. People are watching this right now, and they think this is how Congress normally functions, that we come in here and we argue these bills and we vote and blah, blah, blah. But that's not how it happens at all. In fact, uh, basically five people show up and it's just everybody. Yeah, everybody. Because when you do that, your name doesn't get attached to the bill. It just gets passed and they don't know what you voted for or, or didn't. It's not on record. And so even though they're voting for it, they're just not going to show up to have their name attached to it. And it gets passed. And they're like, I didn't vote for it later on, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. And And that's how the operate. Isn't that part part of what the Freedom Caucus wanted? Some of their demands, I don't know officially what it was called, but bringing back the rule that it would be 14 days that they would get these bills to look at and not like hours before they had to vote. I think that was one of the things they wanted to bring back. And also they wanted to bring back an opportunity to vote out the speaker if they felt that he, he or she wasn't doing a good enough job. Because that, right. that was funded by Nancy Pelosi, I believe, in 2018. The $1.7 trillion infrastructure bill showed up at 1.30 a.m. and they were to vote on it that day. And I don't remember how many thousands upon thousands of, of pages yeah. they're I mean, talking. To, they're talking to Matt Gates right now. Uh, one of the representatives just talking to him. Matt Gates said if McCarthy would be elected uh, Speaker of the House, he would resign. Wow. So they're talking like one of the guys is talking to him right now. I can't read the lips. I don't know what he's saying, but this is. Yeah, the guy is, with the bow tie. Yeah. And uh, but I, I I tell you what I hope he doesn't resign. He doesn't need to. He doesn't mm-hmm. have to hold. I mean, he's put up one hell of a fight, and I think most people. Uh, oh, don't say that! Oh my God, he says you look like a California Republican. My buddy Chris says you look like McCarthy. 
He says, you look oh, like I do. Republican. Yeah, you look like that California Republican. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. It's the hair. Yeah, the hair. It, it's the gray. It's the gray. So I don't know. It's going to be, like I said, I don't know the numbers. But, yeah, man, they're in the Vs, and it doesn't say that McCarthy doesn't have enough. But so there must I think there's some more people that didn't vote on the first roll call that are going to have to they're going to have to recall. OK, so this is going to be interesting because you're on Wasserman Schultz. Can you believe that old thing is still in there in the I know, dude in the DNC? There's a lot of people, man. Uh, Sheila Jackson Lee. Uh, Green from where he is, Georgia. Every time Green from Georgia votes, all he has to say is Hakeem Jeffries. Instead, he, he like stands up and grandstands and uh, he's like, I, my vote is on behalf of all of the black people who have ever been trampled down and oppressed and been shot and by blah, 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 and Black Lives Matter. And then uh, 30 seconds later, Hakeem Jeffries. And it's like, dude, if you're yep. going to nominate him, you give a speech. If not, you just say who you're voting for. And then, okay, you did it one time and grandstanded. That's fine. Everybody can grandstand. That's fine. We're on the 14th vote. You don't have to do it every single right, time. Every time. <laughs> yep. Nope. I mean, dude, well, there's, there's, some- there's what, 10... Um, I just looked it up. Oldest members of Congress, the 10 oldest members of Congress. Yeah, you read them to me. Diane Is one Feinstein. of them that purple haired later? Oh my god, that old bat. Ooh. Feinstein is 88 years old. In April of this year, she will be 89. Um, there's no way, there's no way she's still like, yeah, like operating. Chuck Somebody else is. Somebody else has to be doing the business for her, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, Chuck Grassley is 88. Uh, let's see. Richard Shelby is 87. Uh, let's see. Who's this guy? I just saw him on TV. Uh, Jim Ein- Einhof. He's 87 years old. God. He's from Oklahoma. Uh, let's see. Who else? Uh, Eddie Bernice Johnson. She is 86 years old. Um, Grace uh, Napolitino, is that how you say her last name? She's the one with the gray hair. She is 85. Uh, man, Bill Pascrell, yeah, 85. Been in here. I've been, I Rogers, remember her name called a few times. Maxine Waters is 83. And Man, Gates is pissed. Is 83. Wow. Oh, somebody just voted present. That was Gates. He didn't vote the first time. They, okay, they got six dissenters. Chris, let me know in the chat, man. Is that it? That's all they did was six, right? It looks like Matt Gates voted present. Uh, didn't he not vote the first time around? Four others, two voted present. Graves of Louisiana will vote for Jeffries. Oh, no, he votes for McCarthy. Graves is a Republican, right? Not a Democrat, mm-hmm. yeah. I think. I think so. So to get a Democrat to switch, he's at 15. That's not enough. Look, McCarthy's talking to Gates right now. Uh, I mean, dude, he's probably saying, dude, what's up? Gates should just punch him in the face. (laughs) (laughs) He's walking out. McCarthy's walking out. He's walking out. Where is he going? I'm gonna put it on the screen for anybody else, but if anybody else is, I mean, we'll we'll still do commentary. Yeah. So. Oh no! You you saying he was talking to him because he walked up 
That's Bobert. That's Gates. That's Bobert. Yep. Not gonna happen. So he so he knows he so I guess he knows he's lost and he's like, dude, what is it gonna? Yeah, what is it gonna tell take? him, Gates? This is this is when look, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, this is chaos, blah blah blah. Look, if you want change, how many people say they want in Washington and their government is corrupt? How many people say that? But then they like, so if you're gonna fight the fight, you can't be scared to be seen throwing a, a punch on TV. You know what I'm right? Saying? There's people that they want pe- they want people like this. Oh, he's pointing at him. He's pointing Uh-oh. at him. Tell him, Gates. Tell him. <laughs> Tell him. But you know they they they're doing this. And but they want this, but then they they oh, want look, to be all wait, nice and pretty. He told him something. He's coming back. Like he he turned around real quick, and everyone turned around real quick. Look, there's Higgins. You can't you can't do something if you're gonna fight. It's got to be ugly. You can't you know. Look, who got their kids in there? Oh, whoa, that other dude, they're putting his hand on his mouth and pulling him back. Oh, my goodness. It's getting wild. It's getting wild in the house. I love this. I wish, I mean, I'm not going to pull it up because it's going to make my computer crap out. Yeah. This is unbelievable. This is awesome. This, you want to talk about democracy. There you go. This is democracy. This is why they vote. This is why they vote. Yep. You just want, I mean, this is it. This is why they vote, dude. This is the whole point. The whole point. Otherwise, I mean, you want the corruption to stop or you want it to end? What do you want? Because this is how it stops. Or at least this is the resistance to it. Right. If you're, if you're like, well, I can't stomach this, then go ahead and, and just bow down and get on your knees. It, Otherwise... It, 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 even if McCarthy wins and they give in, do you think this just says this says a little something to people like, hey, there's really some stuff going on. We tried to stop it. You know, Bobert, Gates, you know, we're we're trying to stop it, but there's not enough people on our side to to drain the swamp. Right. And but who wants to so they got them by the numbers. Who wants to be that one person to flip? I mean, oh my God, they're, they're already getting like, they're calling them flip Roy, you know, Who's these people already she... getting dragged over the coals, telling them they're not going to reelect them yeah. uh, for, for flipping for McCarthy. Uh, who wants to be that one that gives it to McCarthy? I, I It ain't going to be Bobert and Gates. Ain't mm-hmm. no way. Nope. They are stone cold. And how do, I mean, okay. Uh, how can you be McCarthy in this situation and be mad and be pissed and be like, dude, you don't have the votes right now. How can you not look more like a corrupt freaking authoritarian? You know what I mean? Yep. This shines the absolute worst light on him. They are all ganging up, looking over. Can you put your phone up? See if they, it, <laughs> where are you at now? Because they are all like, okay, that's McCarthy. I'm watching them. I don't know if you're ahead of me or behind me, but they're all ganging up on uh, Bobert and on Gates, talking to him, looking over him, and uh, I guess trying to convince him. I don't know if you're ahead or behind me. There's a guy he's, oh, he's, he's looking, looking at the dude directly in Gates' ear right now. Almost looks like he's making out with him. Yep. Yeah, he's talking to Gates. Do you get it? You're too close. Back up. <laughs> yeah, look, he's right on him. He's like, tell you know. I think that's one of the guys that I don't know if he stayed with him, the guy with the beard, or if he <laughs> uh or if he flipped or before he's apologizing to him. Oh no, you're ahead of me because now I'm seeing it. Okay. I don't know if they're getting is is I don't know. Mag wow, looking at Matt Gates is like, bro, get out of my face. He, it looks like he's patting him on the back. It looks like Matt Gates said, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Matt Gates looks pissed. Bobert looks pissed. 
It's like almost like they have to go apologize. Like somebody's going to go apologize yeah. to Gates yeah. and Bobert saying we're doing it. I mean, dude, Man, just look nobody, at this. <laughs> just look at this. This is insanity. <laughs> and and how can you be McCart? Look at him. He's so sure of himself. Yeah. Like. I earned this. This is my position. Y'all just fall in line. How could anybody, anybody want that? Yep. How can you be at, at, at this? I mean, with this much resistance, you got to be a little bit humble. Nope. You know, not, in, not in today's world. There's one thing. There's one thing about Matt Gates. I realize. Because people have asked me, because I look, man, I've been dipping into politics since I've been like five years old. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they said, John, would you ever run for office for anything? And I've always said no, because I would never get elected because I've, I've got no filter, no bullshit. And I'm a man of principle and I don't make deals. Right. I'm a, I, I strictly on my principles that is it period and so i would never get elected even if i would get if i would get elected they would end up like killing me you know like i <laughs> yeah you know it, it's, I, they would i would end up suiciding myself apparently you know like a, you know but then you see somebody like matt gates up there and bobert who were just hardcore cold as ice just look he's just staring the guy straight in the face and he's like mm, no i'm not mm -hmm. fucking doing it i said i wouldn't do it i'm not gonna fucking do it you want to have balls you want change uh, yeah. boy how long is this gonna go man <laughs> i look okay so i told people you know when this first had the first day i was like oh my god this is like my birthday because people will forget, maybe, oh, John, he's right wing or he's a Republican. No, I'm a libertarian. Mm -hmm. I love seeing the gears of government get all jammed and, and yeah. dunked up. I love it. They can't do anything to us. They can't, right. do any, they can't do anything good, okay, whatever, but they certainly can't do anything bad to us while they right. can't do anything. Right, they can't do anything. <laughs> so I love watching the gears jam. I mean, oh, my God, how long is this going to last? Never long enough. It's never long enough for me. <laughs> and Dude. you know look who's the president look who runs the senate it's just yep. a house mm -hmm. screw it yep. screw it man let them stay jammed up for months i don't care let them uh, at least until the next presidential election i'm yeah. fine <laughs> i'm fine but uh Amen. i love i love watching it i love watching it and it's been my birthday every day i feel like and if he still doesn't get it tonight <laughs> That's like my fourth. It's like I got my birthday four days four in a times. row. So are they going to, would they adjourn tonight and then come back Monday or would it be tomorrow? They have to. I mean, they would have to. They're trying to get them to flip. They're trying to get somebody to flip, flip to go yeah. in and what, because the, the tally is not official. So they're talking, just trying to say, hey, man, get somebody, somebody to flip. I think all they need is probably one. Mm -hmm. I think just one and he wins, but they're, it's one against them right now, and he's losing. Yeah. They should go talk to the fucking Democrats. Get a Democrat yeah. to flip. <laughs> I mean, they just, they just, they're talking in each other's ears. It's all normally they do this in the back room, but right now it's on TV right, on, on TV. Yep. This is unbelievable. I love it. I don't know. I don't know what this is going to look like. I mean, for anybody watching live, if you're kind of watching with this, it's cool. Uh, I guess on the, the late broadcast, the delayed broadcast, you watch it when I upload it on one of these other platforms later. Uh, probably not as entertaining. Yeah. But if you're you're having a little drink watching this with us, this is this is awesome. This is what content should be. Yeah. You know, uh, Tim Pool was talking. So Tim Pool would do a few segments and he'd have his one live show at night, prime time. Well, in the last two days, he's starting to decide I'm going to do a morning show. And then now 
he's he's having so much success. They're thinking about doing the Alex Jones route. I don't know if you're familiar with Infowars, but they're basically a 24-7 live stream. And so they actually have a few live shows, and then in between, it's just recorded segments and that they schedule throughout. So it's like it's like a radio broadcast, yeah, right? right? It's a 24-7 thing. You have some live shows, and in between, you have other selected programming and tim pools I, I'm, I'm telling you probably by a year from now it's going to be a 24 timcast.com is going to be a 24 yeah. 7 yeah live stream and uh I, I think this is just the way things are going man well gates is still smiling man i don't and i don't think it's because people are telling him thank you for giving up Look at Higgins. I can't believe Higgins. So, and, and then Marjorie Taylor Green, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot believe that she is fighting that hard for McCarthy. Like, they can't get her to go against McCarthy. Like, look, vote for Jim Jordan and he'll give you the same spot. What else? What else does McCarthy have on her? Because she's about as outcast as they come. Mm -hmm. Marjorie Taylor Green, I'll tell you something. I, she's got a bad rap, right? She goes on Tim Pool's show and you can actually hear her speak and you're like, holy crap, she's not as batshit insane and stuff as they make her out to be. She made some good points. One of the things that she said is everybody talks about term limits. We were talking about Grassley and, and all these old ass people, 89 years old, you know, that should be getting out. Um, they asked Marjorie Taylor Greene about term limits and if that's something she'd be signing. She said, here's the thing. It, it sounds like a good idea, but you have to understand there are staffers. There's a lot of staffers in Congress and these staffers don't go anywhere. So as the Congress people come in and out, the staffers stay the same and they've already been a staffer for somebody else. And so they have the experience, right? So even though you elect a new member to Congress, he just hires one of these staffers that are out of a job, and it's just the same people still. Right, still so, in there. Yeah, so it is not as much of a deal. Do the official reading. She's up to the podium. They're still not putting the thing on the screen that he doesn't have enough votes, so I don't know. Uh, while we wait for this, what else happened? We spoke a little bit about Hamlin. What what happened this week yeah. in pop culture? That or any? I mean, politics is pop culture. I get it. Yeah, I mean, it is now. Uh, and then they had then uh, they arrested that guy for the Idaho murders, uh, Koberg or whatever his name is. There was more information that came out about the Idaho murders as well. More details after they, I guess they got yeah. him in extradition. And that, that was just a weird situation, man. That was something from November 13th and those four college kids. I mean, couldn't you imagine, you know, the parents of those four kids not really having answers for, um, man, close to two months. I, so I only heard about it from your show, believe mm -hmm. it or not, as much as I do news, uh, somebody laughed at me in some Facebook discussion when I told them I basically aggregate news for a living because I, I do. Um, yep. it's, it's a significant part of my job. Um, Jim Jordan has received two votes. She, yeah, McCarthy doesn't have the votes. Okay, so he doesn't have the votes. Right, let's get back to this discussion. You know, I, I aggregate news. I look at, at everything. I did a video a while back of... Of uh, people I follow, uh, video wise, whether it's Sticks, 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 Hex and Hammer, Tim Pool, Jimmy Dore. I think I forgot to mention Jimmy Dore on that broadcast. Whatever. If you watch that video and you're like, well, that's all he watches, he didn't know. I actually read all the news to New York Times, Washington Compost, uh, or New York Slimes, yeah. <laughs> uh, Fox News. I read all the news new politics i read it all okay so it's not like it's not like I, I i get all of that too so the the shit i forgot my point <laughs> where was i going with that the oh the the yes but i still got the 
Ohio murder or whatever from your yeah, show. I, yep. I hadn't, I didn't know about it. Yeah, I, I didn't know about it. And uh, I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. And it yep. just kind of went on, went on, went on. And yep. what I what I did read was one of the ways they found him. Apparently, he was going on sites like 4chan and, and other and signing up as anonymous profiles and like leaving out the the details of the murders, which were I don't know how how much did they say publicly um, in in details about what happened with the bodies and uh, how much did how much did you hear? But today they said a little bit more than than what they've said in a while. Um, but they didn't go into from what I was reading this morning into too too much details about you know what he did. Uh, they did say that like another um, roommate that was there because it was more than just the four was woken up by noise and ended up seeing him. Uh, but it, he, it was a mask guy that you know that ran out. So it's like, did he have something with this group of kids to where? I mean, allegedly he killed them, and then he didn't kill anyone else who was in this rent house that was shared with other people. And I mean, it's just strange. And then they they connected him through one of these ancestry DNA sites. That's how they that's yeah. how they they caught him because they found so DNA. This is what on I knife This is what I understand, and this may some of this may be fake news misinformation it's not misinformation i'm not intentionally trying to deceive him i'm just going to tell you what i heard and and take this as rumor uh from what i heard he had some sort of relationship with one of these girls was slightly familiar with them he was at a rival college he was um I think studying criminology, it's yes, kind of like was. a Dexter type, mm -hmm. like kind of basically in that vein, if you're familiar with Dexter. And so had an issue with her, apparently, I guess her relationship didn't work out. And it seems like he, he planned on murdering her and, and her roommates, her college roommates, but didn't realize that there were going to be more people in the building. He didn't realize there were others in there too. And then he was like, Oh shit, I got to oof all of these. Right. Uh, At that point you're committed. Here. I don't mean that in and, a bad way. Yeah. And so it kind of turned out to chaos, but apparently he did the job. And then, uh, but I think there, like you said, there might've been like one that got away or something. Yeah. Uh, she was, she was chaos, in the room. Awesome. Yeah. And he just, I mean, there was more people there than he expected. And then he, like most criminals, have to brag about their crime. Just mm -hmm. can't keep it to themselves. And he went out and on the internet and posted on several forums the details of the crimes that weren't released. And so the police knew about it. The investigators knew about it, but nobody else. And so they... They knew, okay, this guy knows this and that about the crime scene. I don't, I mean, I'll say it. We're on the internet. Uh, it, this is not, I don't build this as a family-friendly show. I don't know if this is true or not. But one of the posts said that he had hung their intestines from a ceiling fan. And I, I, maybe that was a clue that brought the authorities to say, okay, this is, if we can track down this and I'm a source, this is a good lead for him. Uh, from what I understand, they had, uh, they, they were tracking for like two or three days essentially. And they were waiting for him to leave his DNA around somewhere to where they could match it to see if it was him. Cause he wasn't on, he was, I don't know. Uh, it, but they had tracked him for like two, Two or three days and then he got the confirmation it's him go and get him and then when he was arrested they asked he asked them if they arrested anybody else so is there another accomplice or is 
be trying to play those findings. Remember, he's studying criminology, right. yep. and I think he pleaded not guilty to everything. Yeah, right. He was going to plead not guilty. Um, I, I did read that, and it, you're right, dude. It's like, it's like something out of a movie, kind of. You know, and, and some of these murders are like it's just it, it it's so bizarre. Um, something that maybe down the line we'll see some kind of uh, TV series about it or something. But dude, you know, it's. He, he and you hate to judge people, but when I saw his picture, he he kind of looked like an odd cat or like a Dexter type type guy that that clean cut looking white dude, but still like a little bit something off with him. That's that's the vibe I got from him. Just kind of a strange, awkward dude. And then when I saw he yeah. was studying criminology, I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> I'm looking up one story, which is why we had a little <clears throat> tiny hiccup. And while I, I pulled this up, um, they are doing, they're trying to adjourn right now because McCarthy didn't have the votes. And I imagine, <coughs> excuse me, I imagine they're going to be in favor of the Republicans again, yay to adjourn. And that'll be it. I wanted to pull up this uh, in browser Oh, let me see. Let me get Obi up here. And uh uh okay. So uh, here. I, I don't know. I really I really lost you. Missouri number McCall. First openly transgender person executed in the United States. We're talking about Oh. Let's check. Just trying to get the connection back. We should should be good. I shouldn't have messed with that. <laughs> we should be good now, right? Yes, you you're coming back to life. <laughs> I just I just wanted to I just wanted to get the picture of the first trans, transgender person uh, put to the death penalty in the United States. This was Amber McLaughlin. Uh, uh, again, I closed the browser so I can't read the story. I saw I'm not going to have all the facts, but a, a murderer, convicted murderer whose crime was significant enough to get the death penalty. Now, this was a biological male, and the age, I'm not sure the age, but uh, it was certainly north of 30, and I'm assuming, <laughs> I'm assuming, uh, definitely north of 30, I'm, I'm assuming Probably. and that at okay so the age like i said north of 30 probably less than than 50 but amber decided to start transitioning about Three years before the execution date. And as Chris comes back, I'll say that once again. So Amber's okay. age. Sorry, the station's been off the air for an hour, and I don't know oh, why it no. went off. <laughs> so I might have to go see about that. <laughs> right. Well, we won't stay too much longer. We're about to be two hours into the broadcast, and I, I think that's good okay. enough. But I wanted to say this. Amber McLaughlin, uh, again, convicted of murder bad enough to where gets the death penalty. Uh, Amber was a biological male 
certainly above 30 years old. I, I want to say lower than anywhere from 30 to 50. I don't remember the exact age. Okay. Mm-hmm. Started transitioning while in prison three years before the death sentence. I'm thinking this might have been a ploy to get some activists to get this person out of the death yeah. penalty. Yeah. Because when I tried to, that's what caused this whole disruption. I tried to pull up the picture of Amber and it just looked like a man with long hair and they just put like red lipstick on, like you would put on a, like the, you know, like the pig, <laughs> whatever, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Not lipstick to, on a pig. Yeah. Not, not trying to call this person a pig. Certainly not that, but it just, it looked like they didn't put any effort in whatsoever. Yeah. They just put a, a man, some long hair. They put, not even they didn't even braid the pigtails they just put on the just clipped it and just put red vibrant lipstick on and just said oh he's transgender i right. i don't know if i'm buying it uh. maybe he really was maybe she is maybe it really is amber um not look not to offend people out there but i think it's it's certainly something you should talk about because you know trans people exist they trans ism. I don't know if that's the right word. Shouldn't be exploited for other purposes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You shouldn't, those people exist. Being transgender shouldn't be exploited for people trying to get off death row. He shouldn't be faking it. It's what all I'm trying to say. It didn't look genuine to me uh, a few years before you go. And I'm sure they were trying to, Send all these emails and stuff to all these activist organizations to try yep, and to say, hey, protest. And there were protests rallying up the yep. troops. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm gonna, all to, right. I'm gonna have to look that up. So we got uh, less than four minutes to go here on motion to adjourn. It looks like I, I believe the yays are gonna have it. I mean, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. There's only one more Democrat vote. They vote nay, but if all the rest of the Republicans vote yay, they will adjourn. I didn't. I don't have the audio on, so I don't know when they'll adjourn. Yeah. But I imagine it's not gonna be during the weekend because these folks are going home and enjoying themselves. And Chris, I don't want to keep you too much later, man. It's ten thirty our time. Uh, you need to enjoy your weekend as well. Are you going to the Saints game on Sunday? Uh, uh, yes, I am. Did you um, buy my tickets? Huh? <laughs> Did you buy my tickets? Because I, no, I, I got season tickets. I, I got, sold them for 20 bucks. Cool. I, I got a free one. I had a buddy of mine. Um, his company has a suite. And he was like, hey, we got the suite. Uh, and I got a few tickets if you want to come to the game. And I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, let's go. And hey, so I'm going to be there on Sunday. Nice. Yeah. I, I kind of needed That's like a, I, I needed a break. I've been putting in some late hours and I got a gig tomorrow, probably working a little bit during the day. So I'm like Sunday, I just, I'll, I'll go watch the game, even though it, it means absolutely nothing. But who that? Who that man plug your stuff and then uh, we'll kill this stream. Yep. So you can check out my online station, nineties and two thousands rock. It's called the planet. And pretty much anything, if you uh, it, it follows, listen to the planet. So the website is listen to the planet.com. The apps, App Store, Google Play, you search listen to the planet, we pop up. Uh, even now, if you search the planet, which is cool, we come up pretty much the highest in um, any radio station that's called the planet because they still have others around the country, but we do come up now uh, very high in the algorithm there. So that's very cool uh, because there are other radio stations called Planet Radios and the Planets and Planet Rocks, which is why I had to get a little creative in my names, my handles, uh, names for the apps, all that stuff. But if you go to the website, all the details are there. Uh, listen to the planet on Facebook. Chris Logan is my personal Facebook page. I have a Chris Logan in the morning planet power hour Facebook group. And I go live on all three of those pages at eight o'clock with the power hour every Wednesday morning. Oh, every Wednesday, every awesome. weekday morning. Every weekday. <laughs> awesome. And uh, certainly, man, I appreciate having you come on and, and spend the time. I know you work in those long days. I appreciate the hustle. I I envy the hustle. There's not a whole lot of people out there that are doing what you're doing. And it it shows, man, and the, the product shows, and more people need to wake up 
and and see what you're doing. And they need to get their button gear too. And I don't know if they're going to do that, but you certainly are. And the, t- uh, the time's it's running awesome. out. I, <laughs> well, thank you, man. It means a lot out. coming from you. Out for sure. Yeah. So I appreciate you coming on, and uh, we'll do this again. I I don't know if if you're down for next Friday or if you got a gig, and hopefully this Senate, uh, I mean the Congress stuff is is figured out, and uh, and and we can talk talk about more fun stuff. And yeah, we yep. touched a little bit on the radio, but we'll talk more about other fun things. Other things. Yep, absolutely, dude. Sounds like a plan. Have a good weekend. All right, man. You too. And who dat? Right. <laughs> who dat? See ya. All right. So that was awesome. I enjoyed having Chris on tonight. I'm just going to. Okay. So time has run out. The yays look like they have it. 218 to 215. And McCarthy and uh, Gates talking right now. And I don't think McCarthy is going to convince Gates to do anything. We're going to head into the weekend. We still don't have a Speaker of the House. And I think it's awesome. McCarthy's holding up a red. I don't know what it's for. I don't know. What's the what's the red thing? Oh, I guess that just uh, is that their yay or no vote because it's so close. They actually have to vote, I think. Is that what it? I don't know. He's waving it off. So I'm not sure, but that I guess that'll be the end of the broadcast tonight. Hope everybody enjoyed. Um, I'm going to try to figure out how we're going to clip up this show and get some cool points on. But anyways, like, subscribe in all these areas. I'll try to get the audio version of this podcast on as well. I'll have to steal it from the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Till next time, we'll do this on Friday nights. And uh, we'll post the show afterwards on all of those. So they'll probably show up on like Saturday or whatever during the weekend. Hope you enjoyed. Like, share, subscribe etc. And uh, peace out.